Hello and welcome to O Worm. Today we'll be looking at the anatomy of a mussel. Mussels are part of a large group of animals called mollusks. Mollusks include everything from octopuses, squids, and cuttlefish. Mussels are also part of a smaller group called bivalves, named as such because it has two shells. Mussels usually live attached to a rocky substrate and stay mostly sessile for the rest of its life, which is why you see all these other animals and plant life that have grown attached to it. So these are all barnacles, and you can also see some seaweed right here and also here. So now let's take a look at the external anatomy. So first, I'm just going to remove the barnacles. We'll take a closer look at the barnacle anatomy later. To remove the barnacles, just take a scalpel and wedge it under the barnacle and it should lift right up. So these are the two shells and the hinge connects them here. So now let's orient the muscle. The hinge area here is actually the top or the dorsal side while the opening here is the bottom or the ventral side. By this, I mean that when the muscle sticks itself in the sand, the hinge will be the part that pokes out. Now if you look at this side, the pointy end is the anterior side, meaning the front, and the rounder end is the posterior side, meaning the back. This means that when the muscle moves, it'll move in the direction of the anterior side like this. However, the movement of muscles is limited. Most muscles actually stay in one place for their entire lives. Now, muscle shells carry out a variety of functions, including support for soft tissues, protection from predators, and protection against drying out. The muscle shell also has rings, kind of like a tree. You can see the rings here, so you can see this one and another one. You can count the rings to find out how old the muscle is because the muscle grows its shell by adding growth rings around the edge, so it keeps adding new rings here. The part closer to the hinge, around here, would be the older part of the clam, and the new rings here would be the newer. This pointed end is called the beak, and this is the oldest part of the muscle, this hump-like structure near where the two shells are hinged together. Now I'm going to pry open the muscle, and for that, I'll have to cut through some tough muscles called adductor muscles. Muscles have two of these, one on each side. Adductor muscles allow muscles to open and close their shells. Muscles typically close their shells tightly when they are exposed to air, low water levels, or predators. So now I'm going to put a blade between the two shells and try to cut through the adductor muscles. So now that we've opened it up, let's take a look at the internal anatomy. So this thing here, this thin sheet, is called the mantle. It's a sheet of cells that make the shell. The muscle has two mantles, one for each shell. So one here, and you can see another one stuck to the shell around here, right here. And here you can see that the inner surface of the shell is very shiny. This is called the nacreous layer, or also called the mother of pearl. When some debris gets caught in a muscle, the same material that made this layer coats that debris, forming a pearl. Now let's look at the adductor muscles. So here is the posterior adductor muscle, which is a lot bigger than the anterior adductor muscle, which is here and it's a lot smaller. So change of plans, I actually have a different muscle here because the previous one wasn't as well preserved. So now when I lift the mantle, you can see this flap here, this feathery flap, which is the gills. There's one on either side, so you can see another one here in the back. Gills serve the two important functions of breeding and eating, 
by removing oxygen and food particles from the water. Mussels are filter feeders, which means that they eat algae, dust, and other particles filtered from the water by these gills. These food particles then travel to these labial palps, so this little paddle-like thing right here, and there is another one here, which pushes the food into the mouth. So they're kind of like the lips. The mouth should be somewhere below the labial palps, but it's hard to see. So now in the middle of all of this, this fleshy structure here is the foot of the muscle. It's a muscular structure that allows the muscle to move around. It's usually bigger than this, but it contracts and shrinks when the muscle dies. While muscles do move a little, most are almost entirely sedentary and live attached to rocks and other hard surfaces. So when a muscle wants to adhere itself to a surface, the foot emerges from the shell and secretes a thread of proteins, which form a bundle of filaments called a byssus, which you can see right here. This byssus attaches the muscle securely to the surface. So now I've actually switched back to the previous muscle because you can see some other structures better here. And I'm just cutting away the mantle so you can see the visceral mass. So this orangey mass you see here are the gonads, which is also the term for we can't tell if it's a male or female reproductive organ. Muscles will release either eggs or sperm into the water, and fertilization happens externally. This greenish thing here is the digestive gland, which releases digestive enzymes that help the muscle digest its food. Another part of the digestive system of the muscle are the intestines, which are buried within the visceral mass around here, and absorbs the digested nutrients from the food that the muscle ate. The nutrients that are absorbed in the intestine then enters the circulatory system. Speaking of the circulatory system, way up by the hinge here is the heart. The muscle has an open circulatory system, unlike us humans, who have a closed circulatory system. An open circulatory system is a bit like a jacuzzi. The body cavity is filled with a fluid called hemolymph that sloshes around the internal organs, helped along by the pumping of the heart. A closed circulatory system is more like a system of pipes, because all the blood is contained within the system. Now for some bonus content, let's take a quick look at the anatomy of a barnacle. So barnacles are surrounded by this hard shell that they secrete around themselves, which also covers their mouth right here. So if I remove the pieces over the mouth, you can see Inside is this thing. So particles are suspension feeders, which means they filter out food particles in the water. And these are the feeding legs, also called the cirri, which captures food particles and brings it towards the barnacle's mouth. So here you can see all these little legs. So now in a cross-sectional view, you can see that the cirri here leads into the stomach here, this pouch-like structure, and then it leads down into the intestine. And that's the end of our muscle dissection. Thanks for staying, folks. A fun fact about muscles for the road. The muscles shown in this video are marine mussels, which are very plentiful and often eaten as seafood. However, freshwater mussels also exist. Freshwater mussels are generally more mobile than marine mussels and are also known for their longevity. Some species are known to live for over 100 years. Unfortunately, while marine mussels are plentiful, freshwater mussels are the most endangered group of organisms in North America because they are highly sensitive to water pollution. If you want to help prevent water pollution and save these freshwater mussels, here are just some of the steps you can take. Pick up litter and throw it away in a garbage can. Don't pour oils, medication, or chemicals down the sink or toilet. And try to use phosphate-free soaps and detergents. 
Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more. Thank you.